You're about to see an excerpt from a longer video I'm doing on Fender reissues in general, a deep dive. But I wanted to make this little excerpt available for those who wanted to have this information. I'm showing you how to discharge the caps easily in an amp which is otherwise working in passing signal and you know it's safe that nothing's about to explode. There are other ways I discharge capacitors and amplifiers if I cannot power the amp on, it's not passing signal, etc., etc. But in this context, this is how to open a fender safely to like tighten an output jack if you need to, where you don't want to just spin it on this side, you have to support the other side. Just the way that most owners can safely discharge the caps, and we're going to verify that. So this is what I do about 90% of the time in an amplifier, which I know is safe and passes signal. It's easy, it's effective, and I verify. Before we remove the chassis from the amp, I want to talk about some safety concepts with amplifiers in general, tube amps especially. It can have very high voltages inside. These voltages can and will kill you. Most of the time, the owner of an amp, unless he has some or she has some serious electrical experience and training, has no business going inside an amplifier. Specifically with the Fender reissue series, there are a number of places where the hardware often is loose from the factory, where both for reliability and for sound reasons, it can be very important to tighten things up. And you don't want to tighten a jack on the rear panel and just have it be free spinning on the other side and wires twisting and breaking. You want to secure that. So within a very limited context, it can be very good for the owner to go inside one of these at least once or maybe once every few years. I want to show you a safe way to do that so you don't get zapped. And what I'm going to say next can easily be misconstrued or misunderstood, especially by those who like to jump to conclusions and say, aha, gotcha. I'm going to show you one way that usually works to discharge capacitors, at least to the point where you will be safe. It works with the majority of amplifiers out there. It doesn't work with all of them due to the way things are, you know, circuits can be different. This does work for fenders. This does work for traditional marshals. By fenders, I mean traditional fenders. If you have questions, don't do it. This works pretty well, and we're going to confirm that before we put our little fingers in there. And I'll show you how to confirm that. You will need a voltmeter, but I'll show you what we're going to do. I reconnected the speaker. I powered the amp on, and I plugged the guitar in. I've got the treble and bass about halfway, and I've got the volume just over three. When I play this guitar, we should hear something. That may sound really bad through the lav mic. It doesn't matter. We're gonna play, and I'm going to power the amp off and keep playing. I want you to listen. It's even better if you unplug it from the wall and do this. It's electronically the same, but there's just less risk of you flipping the switch by mistake and undoing this. But anyway, I'm gonna play. and I play well past the point beyond which we hear no sound. And what is happening here is that when the amp is on and there's an AC supply coming into the amp, that AC goes through the rectifier tube or in the twin or other solid state rectification model amp, it goes through the diodes and that AC is converted to DC. That DC then fills up the reservoir cap and subsequent filter caps, and then they cycle on and off charging and discharging as you play. But when there's no more AC coming in, they can no longer recharge, or at least they cannot recharge to their full operating level. So once the power was turned off and I continued to play, it was using the remaining DC stored in the filter caps to make that sound. As that DC drops out of the caps, we're not hearing the sound anymore. It means the DC has gone to a point where this amplifier does not have enough DC left to produce sound. Notice I did not take the standby into standby position. I left the standby on. That's crucial because the majority of the filter caps in this amp are after the standby switch. If I had done this and then done that, the reservoir cap would have discharged, the other caps would have stored voltage. All right, so now we have either no DC or very low DC present in the amp. The standby switch was not put into standby, so we know that all the filter caps should have discharged during that process. And we know that there's no uh, sticky stuff holding the chassis to the cabinet at the front. 
with the shielding so it should not tear. This will slide backwards and out. It can be a little tricky sometimes because the Tolex on the sides can be a little bit thick. Sometimes there's a staple and a little bit of a fold. It makes it a little difficult, but there's no real resistance. Now I'm just pulling it out this much, and I'm going to show you where we're going to measure to confirm that what we just did drained most, if not all, of the DC out of the caps. All right, I've got my tripod as high as it goes without going to a lot of work. You can see the wires at the rectifier socket in focus well, and the uh, meter screen is well enough to be able to see. So this wire here on this rectifier tube has a yellow and a green. That's where the B plus feed to the caps is on this amp. So I have my meter set to read voltage DC. With one side, I touch chassis, which is ground. And the other side, I will touch the pin where those that yellow and green wire join. And we've got two 0.7 something volts. That's good. I'll touch it with my hand. Two volts. It's like a nine volt battery. Only it's a two volt battery. So that's what we were confirming. If you have questions, you can find other places in, in the circuit to do the same thing. I'll, I'll show you a couple. It's actually good to show this because a twin reverb or other solid state rectified reissue doesn't have that handy pin eight on the rectifier tube. But what they do have is this orange wire on pin four of each output tube. And that is the screen node. If you have voltage here, it's the same thing with the amps out of standby as having voltage on any of the other filter caps. And we've got 1.88. It's actually going down now that the amp's been sitting a little bit and I'm measuring it. Through the meter, there's actually a path to ground. It is decreasing. But we had two volts at the first node we measured, which is the rectifier reservoir node. And we, have this, we had the same two volts, so it's decreasing now at the screen node. So that's, that shows how my quick and dirty discharge method can work and often does, but we also verified that before we pulled the chassis out and stuck our fingers in. So now I can take the chassis all the way out and look at some stuff in the amp itself.